Hi everyone, welcome to the Quick and Carry Kitchen. I'm Kristen Madreen and I'm here with you today bringing you a fabulous recipe that you're going to love and want to make, I promise you. I want to welcome all of you that are joining us live. Hello, thanks for being with us. Remember you can comment down below and we'll get to our contest today in just a moment. I want to welcome any of you that are joining us later. We always post our videos to Facebook and on our webpage so you can always find us there or on our YouTube channel and so you can always uh, find the Quick and Carry Kitchen. Remember we're the people that made the Quick and Carry bag for your Instant Pot and we do an Instant Pot recipe for you every week and this week I have a really special recipe to do indeed. I am doing Korean spare ribs from Michelle Tam over at Nam Nam Paleo. Uh, Michelle is an amazing cook and she's an amazing instant pot cook. And um, I want to give a shout out to her for this amazing recipe that not only tastes delicious, it makes your house smell fantastic. We're doing this recipe today because in the month of February, what do we have coming up? We have a Super Bowl and Valentine's Day. And if you want something incredible to make for your guests, or to take with you in your Instant Pot, in your Quick and Carry bag, to a Super Bowl party, this is the one to do because it's simple, but it's magnificent. This is one of the best things I've ever made in my Instant Pot. So, let's see, what did I want to, oh yeah, I want to remind everyone that we are going to have you comment down below, and today our contest is, we're going to give two 50% off coupons to any of you viewers who answer the question, do you know your local butcher? Do you have a relationship with the guy at the market who does your meat? And um, we have a wonderful butcher here in Traverse City called Max Bowers Meats. And I'll, um, here's their sign. And I'll talk a little bit more about their meat in a second. But we love our local butcher and they are um, sponsoring the show today. And so I want to give a shout out to everybody over at Max Bowers. And I want to know in the comments down below, do you know your butcher? And one of you is going to win, um, two of you are going to win 50% off coupons um, for, to get yourself a quick and carry bag. So let's see. Who's with us now? Trevor, I hope you were able to join us. I know you were trying to sign on. Caroline, I hope you're there uh, watching today as we are live. Um, again, hello to all of you who are joining us live. So let's talk a little bit about short ribs. Some, some of you may remember that I have been a vegetarian or a vegan most of my adult life. And so now that I'm eating meat, I have to learn a lot about it. And so when I saw this wonderful recipe, I called up Sean at Max Bowers and I had him educate me a little bit about the type of meat that a short rib is. And it turns out that the recipe calls for short ribs with bone in or what is called English style short ribs or spare ribs. And um, about four years ago, the price of this particular kind of meat went through the roof. It's about $9.99 a pound, which when the recipe calls for five pounds of meat, that's just prohibitively expensive. But if you ask your butcher for the boneless spare ribs, it reduces the price by almost half. And so it makes it a much more affordable, special deal. So that's part of why we wanted to talk about knowing your local butcher. You can ask them the same questions and they can educate you about the meat that you're buying. And so Sean at Max Bowers, I really appreciate you helping me figure this out. And what we've determined after several taste tests by the staff at Quick and Carry this morning is that these ribs are fantastic and that you don't miss the bone at all. They are fall off the bone tender when they're done being in the Instant Pot. So let's see. I want to tell you a little bit about how to prepare the meat. So let me get ready here. 
I'm going to show you what I've done. I'm going to set that up here. If you can see here, here's my short ribs. Now, this is a lot of meat. And what Michelle asks you to do is season all the meat before you put it in the Instant Pot. So uh, my clever way of doing this is I put down some tin foil. And last night at my house, I did this with parchment paper. And then I took my salt and pepper shaker and I very liberally applied salt and pepper to my surface. Then I washed and patted dry each of the spare ribs, put them on my prepared surface, as you can see here, and then I went back through with the salt and pepper so that they're sitting here and they're seasoning as we're getting everything else ready. And I feel like this is the neatest and easiest way to deal with getting the seasonings right on all of this meat. Remember, with instant pot cooking, you often have to use more seasoning than you would be used to in a traditional roasting method. And so I've been very liberal with my uh, sea salt and my cracked black pepper. And I'm gonna cover these back up for just a minute. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about the sauce. The Korean sauce is absolutely delicious and super easy to make. <laughs> we have a comment from Caroline that bacon is what made her stop being a vegetarian. Caroline, me too. I went five years with no bacon, no pepperoni, no meat at all, and um, I finally decided bacon was probably worth it, and I'm so glad that I did. Um, so I'm with you on the bacon, Caroline. Thank you. So the sauce is super easy. You're going to measure out a half a cup of coconut aminos. If you're doing paleo or Whole30, that's probably what you're going to want to use. If you're not, you can certainly use soy sauce or tamari. And I put, I added to my coconut aminos two teaspoons of fish sauce. And again, if you're eating Whole30 or paleo, you're going to have to read the label because some fish sauce has sugar in it. Then I have uh, let's see, I want to make sure I'm telling you the right thing. I have a tablespoon of rice vinegar here, and I'm going to put that in the pot, the blender. Then I have cut up um, some green apple. You can use Asian pear, which is what I used last night. Uh, you can use apple. You can use a combination of apple and pear. And then you're going to add garlic. Uh, chopped up about six to eight cloves of chopped up garlic, uh, three scallions that you've just chopped roughly, and about a thumb's worth of ginger that you peel and then cut in a, just a couple of pieces because it's going to all work together in here. So I'm going to add all of our ingredients. Make sure to get all the garlic because that's important. Now I'm just going to whir this real quickly. And I'm going to find my little spatula and move it around a little bit. Remember, you can win a quick and carry discount today. So comment down below on, do you know your local butcher? Is that somebody that you've gotten to know because you, like me, need an education from time to time? Okay, very good. Now, I have blended it until it's all incorporated and sort of smooth. And now I'm going to give you another little hack to the recipe that I found to be um, helpful to me. When you read through Michelle's recipe, which you absolutely should do, and she has a great video on her website, it talks about putting the meat in the pot first and then 
putting the sauce over it, but moving everything around so that you get the sauce down to the bottom. So my little tiny hack is to just put a little sauce in the bottom to start with. And this is to prevent burning or getting a too hot notice on your Instant Pot. So I'm gonna put that there. And now I am going to take all of my ribs and arrange them in the pot. And these are really big, but you can just sort of stack them around nicely and they will reduce down as you cook them. So we're just going to stick these guys in. And even just, I can smell the marinade. Oh my goodness, it is so delicious. There's just something about ginger, garlic, fish sauce, all of that together is just so yummy. Here we go. And you can tell that they have been, they're keeping the seasoning even on the bottom. So I know that my little way that I've been doing it is working. And then look, cleanup is extra easy. And now I'm going to take the rest of my sauce and pour it over. There we go. Now you are going to want to just move everything around a little bit in the instant pot liner, making sure you've got all the good garlic and ginger pieces and everything that you want there. Whoops, let's not crash the blender to the ground. Now I am going to get my tongs and just move everything around a little bit so that the sauce is equal on all of them. Getting it in there nicely. Oh boy. And now here comes the easy part. You put this in your instant pot for 45 minutes. And so make sure you lock your lid on, put your toggle to ceiling, and put your manual or pressure button to 45 minutes. So I'm going to get that there. And when you come back after the 45 minutes, when your beep goes off, your pressure cooker will count up the minutes for a natural pressure release. And you want to let it go for about 25 minutes. There's a lot of hot a liquid when this is done because that sauce and the juices from the beef cook down and you don't want to open it and you want to let the beef sit in the juices for a full 25 minutes before you open it. When I opened it last night when I made this dish at home, number one, my house smelled so incredible. Number two, it was still very hot and I pulled out a couple of the ribs and checked them for doneness and they were perfect. Michelle does say that if after you've done your natural pressure release, take a rib out and if it's not done, you can go back into pressure mode for five or ten more minutes just to make sure that the meat is done and you want it falling off the bone tender. So uh, Kathy wanted to know if these are pork ribs or beef. These are beef short ribs. I'm sure that this same uh, marinade or dressing could be used on pork ribs. I'm sure it would be absolutely delicious. I also thought that this would be lovely with chicken. It would really be um, so good. And um, Kara says that <laughs> her butcher is really funny. See, that's great. If you know that, that means that you've talked to him and have some questions and uh, gotten some interaction with your butcher, which I think is just really lovely and kind of helps you um, keep your food local, doesn't it? Who else is with us today? Kathy. Oh, hi, Kathy. I'm so glad Kathy Genevieve is with us today. Um, you finally tuned in on time, and we're so glad to have our friend Kathy with you with us today. Um, make sure that you leave messages for us down below. We uh, watch your comments, even those of you who are not watching live. If you leave us a question or a comment, down below our video, we try to always answer you, and you can find the links to this recipe to our blog. We'll also put the link to Michelle's blog down there. 
I want to give another shout out to Max Bowers for sponsoring today's show with um, this lovely, lovely meat that we've gotten. Um, Jesse wants me to go over what's in the marinade again. Okay, it is rice vinegar, coconut aminos, fish oil, um, scallions, about a thumb's worth of fresh ginger, and about six cloves of garlic. You put that all in a high-speed blender and just uh, whir it and make that into like a marinade or a sauce that goes over it. And then you pour that over the ribs that are now in the pressure cooker and you cook for 45 minutes. It is going to make you want to eat them as soon as they are out. Um, the recipe calls for putting them on a plate, putting the sauce over them, and sprinkling a little cilantro over them. They, um, depending on how big your ribs are, um, they make a nice portion for each person. Um, these going in today are a little bit bigger than the ones that I cooked last night, so I'm anxious to see how those turn out at the, the final product. There will be some um, snacking on ribs all afternoon here at the Quick and Carry Kitchen, I can tell you that. So, let's see. Uh, Jesse, thanks for tuning in, and I hope that answered your question. And um, Trevor, if you are watching, I want you to give me a shout out. That would be lovely. I hope you're there. I know that Caroline joined us and I know that our friend Andy will be joining us later. Um, we love to hear from you. If there's a recipe that you would like to uh, see us make or talk about or learn about, uh, please let me know. I uh, Some of these uh, kitchen shows are because one of you has said, hey, Kristen, will you make such and such so that we can learn about doing it in the Instant Pot? So please comment and question down below. And we're getting close to, we're going to choose two of you that are going to get 50% um, uh, off coupons to get a quick and carry bag. And I know that if you're going to be taking your instant pot with you wherever you go you're going to want one of our bags and people always ask me this so I'm going to talk about this especially because this is the perfect recipe to do this the quick and carry bag will take your hot instant pot with you just fine so let's say you make these ribs and you um, they are wonderful to go in the refrigerator. You can put the whole liner of the, the Instant Pot in the refrigerator. You know, they make those nice covers for them. And then uh, let them sit in there overnight. In the morning, scrape off some of the fat that's risen to the top. And then you can put them back in the pressure cooker for five minutes to heat them back up and get them to that nice, soft, falling apart uh, texture again. That's what I did here this morning, and I do have to say, I think they are better the second day, as so much else is. They were wonderful last night when they first came out of the Instant Pot, but today the flavors have melded a little bit, and just warming them up and serving them to my colleagues, um, they are absolutely delicious. You can also freeze these, but if you're going to be taking them with you to a Super Bowl party, you can heat up the Instant Pot, do the five minutes at home, and put that hot pot in your quick and carry bag. We designed the bag so that you could take a hot pot with you where, uh, to a party, to a picnic, to a potluck, whatever you're going to. So a lot of people want to know, can I take my Instant Pot hot? And yes, you can. You can also just put the stuff in the pressure cooker, put it in your bag, take it to where you go are going, and do the five minutes reheat there and everything would still be be hot. The reason that you can do this is that the liner and the, the heat of the Instant Pot mostly stays within the Instant Pot, which is one of the wonderful things. If you feel them, even while they're cooking, they do not get dangerously hot on the outside. So thank you, Instant Pot Company, for making such a wonderful tool. I call it my magic pot. When it makes something as delicious as this recipe is, I think it is just like magic. It makes all of us who are using it a better cook. So let's see. Um, oh, Trevor is here. Okay. 
Trevor, I'm really glad that you were able to join me live today, and you would love this recipe. And it is perfectly done spare ribs in Korean sauce. Oh, thank you, Nam Nam Paleo, for a wonderful recipe. Thank you to Max Bowers for providing the meat for us today. And let's see, who are our winners today? Oh, Kathy and Diane. Kathy Genevieve and Diane Groth, you're both going to get 50% off coupons to get yourself or someone that you love a quick and carry bag. So um, this is a great recipe for an upcoming Super Bowl party. It would also be lovely for um, a Valentine's Day dinner for someone special. And the guys around here were talking this morning. They said um, that they would definitely want to take this meat and maybe use it in some sort of a taco or on nachos. And I thought that too is a wonderful idea. So this is a super easy to do recipe. Um, it does take a while. In the Instant Pot, you're going to be waiting about 15 minutes for it to come up to pressure, 45 minutes for them to cook, and then wait at least 25 minutes for a natural pressure release. But if you make it the night before and then refrigerate it and take it with you to your party the next day, you're going to be very happy that you made this recipe. I want to thank you from everyone here at the Quick and Carry Kitchen. Thanks for joining us live today. Um, and we'll be back next Friday here with another recipe that will be good for your special February events. So thanks to everyone. And as Julia Child used to say, bon appetit.